In this video, we're going to look at the abiotic factors, the non-living factors, in a bit more detail. And we're also going to compare the range or the change in abiotic factors between an aquatic and a terrestrial environment. So the first abiotic factor we're looking at is viscosity. And viscosity is how hard it is to move through a gas or a fluid, a liquid. Uh, in water, it's actually quite hard to move through, which is why we find most animals that live in the water have a streamlined body. While on land, air is much easier to move through, so it's not necessary for animals living on the land in terrestrial environments to have that streamlined appearance. Buoyancy is how much support is provided by the environment. Uh, in an aquatic environment, there's quite a bit of buoyancy and quite a bit of support. So whether it's jellyfish uh, staying up and together, or whether it's the gills of fish uh, spreading out in the water because of the buoyancy, there's quite a bit of buoyancy in water. On the land, air doesn't have the same amount of buoyancy, so most animals need to support themselves somehow, uh, whether it's by having a internal skeleton or an exoskeleton, an external skeleton. Temperature variation uh, refers to the range in the, or the variation in temperature, uh, but we've got to look at this in both a daily range as well as a seasonal range. Now, water has much a much smaller range, uh, and in particular, it has a much smaller daily range. So if you were to go to the beach in the morning compared to going to the beach in the afternoon, the temperature, or even in the middle of the night, the temperature of the water is going to be quite similar. It will change going to, uh, into the water from winter to going into the water at summer, so the seasonal variation, but the daily variation is quite small. On the land, it's a very different story. So for example, if you're in the desert, it might get very hot during the day, but because there's no cover to keep that warmth in, at night it can get very cold. So you can have a very large daily fluctuation in the temperature. And on top of that, you also have your seasonal fluctuations. Pressure variation is how much pressure there is and from either the air or the water. Now in water, as you get deeper, the pressure increases. And this is why when you dive deep in a pool, you get that pain in your ears because of the pressure on your ears. So as you get deeper in water, the pressure increases. And as you get higher in the air, so on terrestrial uh, environments, as you get higher, the pressure decreases. Now, this means that in a aquatic environment, as the pressure increases, the animals need to be able to deal with that. And some of these deep sea animals, if you were to pull them up out of that pressure, they'd actually uh, lose a lot of their structure and they'd expand because of that. Uh, in, a, in a terrestrial environment, as the pressure decreases, the amount of oxygen available in in the air also decreases, so it makes it harder for animals to breathe. Uh, which leads us straight into the availability of gases. Now, animals need oxygen, plants need carbon dioxide, and how available this is will affect how many uh, and how the different types of animals that can be found there. So, for example, at high altitude, the oxygen's thin, so animals need to be adapted to that, or the air's thin, which means that there's less oxygen. Uh, and in water, the surface water might have quite a bit of dissolved oxygen and carbon dioxide in it from the splashing around that occurs on the surface. But as you get deeper and deeper into the water, the amount of oxygen decreases. So we generally get the majority of life living in an aquatic environment within the first few metres of the uh, sea level or the, the top of the water. 
The availability of water is uh, how much water there is and how often it falls. And this is generally not a problem in aquatic environments because there's water everywhere. Uh, but then you've got to start thinking about osmotic pressure, so how salty the water is. Uh, but in terrestrial environments, it's very, very important. Uh, so a rainforest has heavy rainfall all year round. A desert has very little rainfall all year round. But we also have uh, areas like uh, tropical areas where you might have a large amount of rain in one particular time of the year and not very much for the rest of the year. So, for example, uh, in northern Australia, that we have a dry season and a wet season. Availability of ions refers to the amount of trace nutrients that are available. Uh, all plants and animals need uh, things like uh, chloride ions, magnesium, uh, sodium, uh, all these ions they need to live. So how much of those ions are available depends or will influence uh, what animals can live there and how many animals can live there. Light penetration is the intensity of light at a particular point. Uh, so on a terrestrial environment it might be how much light actually gets to the particular layer in which a organism is growing. For example in a rainforest there's a thick canopy, so the uh, trees that form the canopy very high get quite a lot of sunlight, while the undergrowth doesn't get very much sunlight, so it's quite limited in what can actually grow in the undergrowth there. Uh, in the water, the light, different wavelengths of light penetrate to different amounts, but even the most penetrative only goes a hundred, couple of hundred metres down into the ground, uh, into the water. So this means that if plants are living in an area, they need that sunlight, so they need to be closer to the top of the water, uh, which, as I said before, is where most life is found, at the top in those first few metres of water. Availability of substrate refers to the composition and quality of the sand or soil or whatever it is that the plants are growing in. Uh, so some soil is very good quality for growing in and some soil isn't very good quality for growing in. And this is the same whether it's in an aquatic environment, so the soil below the water, uh, or whether it's in a terrestrial environment. Strengths of natural forces uh, will, could include tides in an aquatic environment, uh, as well as currents pushing things around. And in a terrestrial environment, uh, can be wind blowing things around. And that those uh, natural forces are going to affect what can actually grow because, uh, for example, trees that are growing in a high wind area uh, need to have strong roots to hold them into the ground so they don't get blown over. Availability of shelter. Uh, from the natural forces that we just talked about before, as well as from the sun. Uh, some plants and animals can only grow in uh, sheltered areas, so maybe a plant doesn't need full sunlight, or an animal needs to be sheltered from the hot sun during the day, or from the rain to, that might cause it to get hypothermia. Uh, so the amount of shelter that's available will affect what plants and animals are able to grow in a certain spot. The amount of space is available, and this could, doesn't necessarily just mean uh, the amount of space for a particular animal to have room to grow. Uh, it also can be for regarding territorial animals, which need more room than just the size of them, uh, as well as animals that have particular nesting sites. So some birds can only nest in a particular uh, type of tree or a particular nook in a tree. And so the availability of those trees and those nooks is going to affect how many organisms the environment can support.